Hey everybody, this is my 20 gallon open topped office tank and tonight I'm just going to do a basic water change. We're going to do a simple before and after video. I have been kind of keeping an eye on the nitrate levels in this tank. For those of you who follow along, you'll know that quite a while ago, several months ago, I added a bunch of uh, very fine sand into the tank. Now, I know that is not enough sand to call it a deep sand bed. It's only about three inches deep, maybe three and a half inches deep. And I would say you probably need to get at least five inches deep before you'd really start getting into that uh, denitrifying type of deep sand bed. The idea being is that the sand bed is deep enough that as the water flows through it, it becomes oxygen poor and by the time it gets all the way down to the bottom you get anaerobic bacteria that actually breaks down the nitrate and converts it back into nitrogen gas amongst a few other gases but it actually takes the nitrates out of your tank if you set it up properly so I know I didn't set it up properly I never really intended to to do a deep sand bed in a tank this shallow it wouldn't leave a whole lot of room for water so I was just kind of setting it up to see if I could have some kind of impact. And I'm honestly still not sure if I do. I always tend to have lower nitrates in this tank than I expect whenever I do a nitrate test on it. But I also have some pretty vigorous growing plants in this tank. And right now I've got my uh, couple of temple plants here, or hygrophila is what it's actually called. It can also be called swamp weed, which is one of my favorite names for it. And right now... It is flowering and it is also generating new growth. I just made a bunch of cuttings off of this and you can see all this nice new growth developing at all the nodes where I cut it. So the new growth will be drinking up nitrogen compounds, nitrate, and the flowers will probably be more concerned about soaking up uh, phosphorus out of the tank. So if I've got any phosphates in the tank, that'll be good for the plants. Um, I do have a phosphate test kit, and I might check for them just for the heck of it to see what they're doing, but it probably will come out at like 0.25 parts per million or something. I, every time I've ever checked for phosphate, it has been almost nothing. Uh, I actually got the phosphate test kit way back in the day when I had um, a marine tank, and phosphate is a lot more impactful in a marine tank than it is in a tank like this. Phosphate doesn't make a whole lot of difference in a tank like this, but it makes a huge difference in a marine tank so i do have a phosphate test kit maybe we'll check for that just for the heck of it like i said um, nitrate wise we will check to see what it is i'm going to do a water change regardless of what it is it's just been a little while and i like to swap out some old water and put some fresh water in every now and again regardless of what the nitrate uh, or tannin levels are or anything else and the water looks good but I still want to empty a little bit of it out and put some fresh water back in. I'm probably also going to um, gravel vac a little bit. Again, with this tank, with what I just described, I'm trying to get it established with some sort of deep sand bed. So disturbing the substrate, especially with the planted tank, is not a good idea. I will be very, very sort of gently kind of going over the surface to pick up any loose uh, uneaten fish food or dead plant material or anything like that and I'll also sort of rummage the gravel vac through the plants a little bit and you know any of the detritus and stuff that kind of settles down and gets stuck in the plants there I can pull that out with the gravel vac too so let me go ahead and get started on that like I said it's just going to be a simple before and after so we'll check the nitrates and we'll look at all that stuff on the other side of this video so right now we'll call that your before and there's your after so we got a little glimpse of my Pisto there on the left. He's over near the heater now. And in just a moment, I'm sure he'll be down hiding underneath of the heater. That's where he always hangs out, either there or he gets in the right-hand corner and gets down underneath that power head and hides. It's getting a little more outgoing. It's getting a little more trusting when it's feeding time. But when I'm doing stuff like this, he's still a little on the sketchy side he's not quite sure what's going on with the camera and of course i'm standing here talking very loudly and so on and so forth so he's still a little shy but cool fish nonetheless so we did four gallons more or less i didn't do the full bucket because we had already uh lost some water to evaporation and by the time i had pulled four gallons out of there i felt like the tank was low enough 
I vacked a bunch of the crud and mulm and stuff out of there. I removed a bunch more than I really sort of anticipated in being able to pull out of there. So that was good. I changed out the filter pad. And for those of you who are wondering why my filter does not have a top on it, that is because the top rattles a little bit. No matter what I do to it, there's always a little bit of a vibrating, rattling noise. And it gets on my nerves. So I take the top off. Now, I'm sure that probably drives some of you crazy. And that would drive you nuts having the top off of your filter like that, just seeing it exposed. But it doesn't bother me at all. I hardly even notice it. In fact, I forgot to mention it in the first half of the video. Uh, I intended to, but again, just not something I really even think about. But it runs completely silently without the top on, and I don't have to worry about it. So that's why it runs uh, like that. So I did test the phosphates while I was doing the water change. I checked the uh, water before we did the water change. And I was really surprised to find over five parts per million. The test only goes up to 10 parts per million. I don't think it was quite that dark blue, but it was way, way darker than I expected it to see. Um, I don't believe the phosphate test. I'd have to run downstairs to confirm this, to double check. But I don't believe the phosphate test uh, maintains its color over time. You have to look at it when it's fresh. If you let it sit for an hour, which it's been since we've done the water change, um, the test gets all funky looking and it doesn't look right. And again, just showing you what color it is isn't really going to be that big of a deal. Uh, trust me when I say it was dark blue. It was at least five to eight parts per million maybe. It was definitely getting up there towards ten parts per million, which is really high uh, for phosphate. I've never really seen it like that before. Every time I've ever checked phosphate, it has always come out uh, somewhere around one part per million or less. I think the most I've ever remember seeing is two parts per million. And that was in a tank that I had been dosing with uh, fertilizers and stuff. And I think that uh, maybe that might have contributed to getting it all the way up to two parts per million. So how we are at five parts per million phosphate in this tank or eight parts per million or whatever it was is beyond me. I'm not really sure why it would get that high. I'm not feeding the tank anything unusual. Now, I will say that I have not been doing water changes very frequently on this tank because the nitrates have been staying so low. Uh, the only thing I've really been worried about doing water changes for is uh, getting the mulm out of there and when the tannin starts building up too much, um, which really kind of is surprising when you think about it. This little piece of wood right there is the only wood I've got in the tank, and that piece of wood has been um, in an aquarium for almost 10 years now, and yet this tank still gets very much tannin stain. So I don't know if the tannin comes out of the roots of other plants uh, or what. I've had that discussion before, but this tank still gets dark and tea stained water in it after a while and that little piece of wood is the only piece of wood that's in this tank and that piece of wood has been underwater for almost 10 years probably uh, at least eight years that's actually one of the first pieces of wood i ever bought when i first got into the hobby around 2010 so it really that probably is 10 years old now and been underwater ever since so i'm not sure where the nitrate i mean not sure where the uh, tannin comes from if it's still leaching out of that or not but even after all the time it's been since the last water change I've done, that is the nitrate. It was getting up there a little bit. I know it looks a little redder on camera than it actually is, but I put it next to the little chart, and it's probably about 20 parts per million. It might be a little higher than 20 parts per million. I was curious about my tap water. It's been a while since I've put any salt in my softener, so it's entirely likely that I've actually got nitrate in my tap water at this point, but I do not. That is my tap water, so I know my softening system is still functioning. Uh, I do have salt for it, but we've been getting so much snow, I've been kind of hanging onto my salt in case I need it for the driveway. Uh, once we get through this next storm, which has actually already started, it's snowing out the window right now, um, I'll be able to get that salt back in my softening system, and it'll again uh, get back into removing the nitrate and everything. Well, obviously, it's still removing the nitrate, so uh, no worries there. Anyway, that's about it. Phosphate's really high, at least for phosphate. Um, nitrate, not so high, but that does explain why we're getting plenty of growth, and I've got uh, flowers. Again, the flowers enjoy the phosphate more than they do the nitrate. 
but the plant's also actively growing. So it's not only flowering, but it is producing new uh, growth. And whenever it's generating new growth and growing new leaves and new branches and stems, uh, it needs the nitrate or it needs nitrogen compounds for that. And of course, it sucks the nitrate right out of the water. Any ammonia that's in the water will get drawn up first. Any nitrite will get drawn up. And then lastly, uh, it will draw the nitrate up. So not too worried about it just kind of curious i'm still scratching my head as to why that phosphate is so high now i'm also going to say that phosphate has less impact on fish than nitrate does and nitrate has very little uh impact on fish so phosphate is completely harmless to fish and that's why nobody ever talks about it because it doesn't bother the fish at all what it will do is cause um, you know, algal explosions or um, really vigorous plant growth. And of course, in this case, I've got a really vigorous growing plant. So that's not a problem for my tank. I'm not having big algae explosions or anything else because, um, well, you know, I say that, but this, you know, I, I want to say, well, this plant's drinking up all the phosphate, so I don't have any algae, but we've clearly, we've got five parts per million phosphate in the water. So clearly there's plenty of phosphate in the water for the algae to eat. So why I don't have algae growing all everything in this tank is a little bit of a mystery to me too. I don't know. Again, this tank's been a little bit of an experiment with that deep sand bed. I can't imagine that's got anything to do with whatever this is going on. But my nitrate was still relatively low for as long as it's been, and my phosphate was unusually high. Maybe I'll go around and check some of my tanks in the basement and see what the phosphate looks like in those tanks. Maybe it's higher than I think in all of my tanks now. I don't know. But make sure you're subscribed, and you won't miss any of the updates on that or anything else I've got coming up. You never know what it's going to be with me. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget that is my 20-gallon open-top office tank. I'll see you real soon in the next one.